Hello my fellow hunters, today I come to you with the most effective method of leveling your guiding lands real super right quick, because let's be honest, you want to unlock the uh, four secret monsters that we'll talk about once I have shared with you this honestly very simple but effective method. So before I started doing what I'm about to share, I was just spending hours and hours and hours and hours hunting monsters from the zone that I want leveled, seeing my progress kind of crawl up and just being like, oh, getting to level six slash seven for all the good stuff in each is going to take forever. Damn you, grinding lands! <laughs> But now, that's no longer the case. So, every time you do something that is worth research points, so trapping a monster, a turf war, picking up a track, you get progress. Slaying, of course, and breaking parts too. But, you know, that requires the slaying and the breaking of parts, which requires hunting, which requires time. And don't get me wrong, it's awesome. You get materials, you get master rank. How rude! And by the way, the best way to get master rank is just a effective damage set. Run fortify, run the boa boa gadget to get extra backup, and just tear through the guiding lines on loop after two feints, and just kill and kill and kill and kill, and you will really raise up. You want tempered guiding land monsters, and you're set. You really don't need to worry about investigations, unless you're very, very keen on decorations. But even then, the guiding lines does give really nice decorations too, so you can just spend your life here. Your soul is mine! So how am I getting a full bar and a bit of level in a land per 10 minutes? Just 10 minutes. Well, I mentioned it just before. Footprints, tracks, they are gold dust. And I love you might have already figured this out, but, you know, I had a kind of, wait a minute, what if I just... And then I did. I started following monsters around, not killing them, choosing ones that don't attack on sight, and just collecting tracks. And lo and behold, I was absolutely powering up through the ranks. You can gather your ore and your bone piles while you're doing this as well to double up on your efficiency. Once you start getting to your tempered monsters and following them round and doing this, like a tempered palumu that doesn't really care about you, so you just gotta grab all of its fluff, well then you start pouring in the tempered investigations too. It's a fantastic double up farming method for when you just want stuff to work with. Obviously, no materials, no rank, but that's not the focus here. We want to level up the actual quality of our zones as fast as possible. And the thing is, you want the lower tier monsters. Creatures like Baroth, creatures like Titsu Yaku, creatures like your Kulu Yaku. They drop so many tracks, and they're worth just as many points. In fact, one of the champions for this is Banbaro. You get a lot of research for him because he's very bloody common, and you can summon him in any of the four zones. So if you have a Banbaro, you summon him in, and lo and behold, you just follow him round real peaceful like, picking up his CONSTANT footprints because he does constantly leave them. I needed a tiny little bit of coral to get myself to level 5. So I loaded in, there was a Bambaro tied to coral and there was a Titsu, and within minutes I finished off that little bit. But, you know, that's only a tiny example. So for the rest of it, I tried to do desert. I'd barely leveled desert. I got one with a Baroth and a Kula Yaku. Yes, you kind of do need favorable monsters, but that's still quicker getting them with a few refreshes. Just hop around investigations and look what your guiding land's got. It's very quick. Just some loading screens and then go when you've got favorable monsters. So this Baroth and Kulu combination, I followed them round. I ran around the desert for literally 12 minutes and got nearly two full levels of my desert without really having to put in any 
kind of real effort. It was absolutely fantastic. So if you are in a position where you just want to go and get to level 6, get to the secret monsters, unlock them, get to level 7, get to the tempered elders, unlock them, get those rare parts for your rare augmentations and all of the some such goodliness, just get some favorable monsters and get their tracks. It is absolutely phenomenal and I am so happy it works this way because otherwise it is so many hours upon hours upon hours upon hours of hunting to raise the ranks via that method. Now, this might not even end up being the best, but I have spent a long time researching this since I've got here, and there's not really anything better you can do, at least solo. If there's four of you, you still want a footprint, but before the monster escapes from the locale, grab yourself a shock trap each, the materials to make the maximum amount of more shock traps, and even if they only last a tiny second because of built-up resistance, just chain them, because every time you trap a monster, you get a chunk of level, so that's really quite fun too, and a little bit cruel, but you know, we need that level! So now that we know how to, well, raise the level quickly, you need to get to master rank 70, having done the second hunt to break the cap, a lovely tempered Brachydios, mmm. And then you get each of the areas to level 6, and that will give you a new monster to work with. There won't be any ceremony, it'll just spawn in randomly as it does. I would recommend capping it the first time so you unlock its arena quest, and then you just have that in your game. Now, there are four monsters, three armor sets, so if you don't want to know what exactly they are, and I'm not going to whack footage up because I don't want to spoil the actual fights because they're very cool, well, this is a quick rundown. Get the Ancient Forest to level 6 for Scarred Yangaruga, a tempered-only version with different moves, but not a new armor set, but he is mental, okay? Get the Coral Highlands to level 6 for our good old friend, the Moon! And by that I mean Silver Rathalos. He, again, is phenomenal. Then we got the Desert to level 6 for Gold Rathian. And then finally, the Rotten Veil to level 6 for a certain Brute Tigrex. All of them are wonderful, powerful, difficult challenges and well worth doing. You also have your Runa Gigante once you get to Master Rank 99, but that is by the by. So there you go, guys. That is the method I've been using. That's what's been working, and I hope this helps out in some way. So grind the Guiding Lands, just kill everything for Master Rank, and farm footprints on favorable monsters for really quick raw levels. Like if you enjoyed this, subscribe for more. I will see you soon. A good boy. Rage gaming with the video float. But that's all that's really relevant at the mo. But I'm still gonna leave this up so you patrons know that I love you even though the outro's no longer that kind of relevant. But the new one's being worked on and it's gonna be a truly badass song. And don't worry, I won't be doing any rapping on it. I'm gonna go now. Uh, this was shit.